So let's take a look at this problem involving Vesper geometries with bond angles. Uh, the first thing that we're always going to do is draw a Lewis structure. Um, no uh, tricky parts here. Um, remember, you could have an expanded octet, but we haven't given you a problem here that involves an expanded octet. Uh, but just a friendly reminder that any charge species go in brackets with the charge in the upper right-hand uh, corner. From there, we're going to offer the AXNEM notation, where A is the central atom, uh, the subscript for X refers to the number of outer atoms, and the subscript for E refers to the number of lone pairs on the central atom. We do not care about lone pairs on the outer atoms, um, and the subscript for E refers to the number of uh, lone pairs on the center atom, not the number of electrons, and I'll show you what I mean uh, by that in a second. So taking a look at uh, the hydronium ion, H3O+, we would have AX3E1. Uh, there are three outer atoms in one lone pair on the center atom, not AX3E2. Um, we go by the number of lone pairs, not the number of electrons. This would be AX4. This would be AX2E1, uh, because we have uh, two outer atoms and one, one lone pair excuse me, on the center atom. Uh, this would be AX2, AX3. Um, again, we're ignoring double or triple bonds. We don't have any triple bonds here, but we would ignore those if we did. And this would be AX2E2. Um, so hopefully we have that uh, provided in the column on the right. Um, now remember we need to first figure out the number of electron groups. Uh, the number of electron groups is going to be the sum of uh, the subscripts here. So in AX3E1 uh, the number of electron groups would be 4, AX4 would be 4, 3, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the number of electron groups refers to, in the Vesper theory, the number of electron pairs that need to be separated in space. Uh, and Vesper predicts that the molecule will adopt a structure that does this in the most efficient manner. So if you have two electron groups, the most efficient manner to do so is a straight line or a linear shape. Three would be trigonal planar, and four, although you might anticipate uh, it being square planar, it's actually uh, tetrahedral, um, and we have to make sure we pay attention to the three-dimensional geometry um, there. Um, so what I've done is I've offered the basic uh, geometries here uh, in the best for structures, and I'll go through how I uh, figured out the bond angles and the, and the names in a second. Um, but whenever you have four electron groups, the structure is going to be based on the tetrahedral-like structure. However, remember, we name the molecule as if the lone pair wasn't there. So although the electron group geometry for hydronium is tetrahedral, we call it trigonal pyramidal because we pretend uh, that the lone pair wasn't there. We actually don't know where the lone pair can actually physically see it uh, very easily. Um, the bond angle here, as uh, in any tetrahedral structure, is going to be 109.5. However, in this case, since we have a lone pair, it's going to compress this angle and make it slightly less than 109.5. You don't need to be able to tell me uh, or tell your teacher how much less, just that it's less than 109.5. You could also provide this bond angle. It's identical to this one. Uh, but what we don't want you to do is provide this angle. Um, we don't know where the lone pair is, so it's uh, really uh, not a good idea to label a bond angle that's a lone pair atom to atom. We want to stick uh, to the, where the nuclei are in this uh, molecule, and the nuclei obviously are, are in the center of uh, these atoms. Um, PCL4 uh, plus is an example where the electron group geometry is the same as the molecular geometry or shape. Um, so we have four electron groups. It's based on a tetrahedral structure. So um, we put uh, uh, the chlorines in a tetrahedral like arrangement here, and the bond angle should be 109.5. Um, again, all the positions in a tetrahedron are equivalent, so it doesn't matter where. Uh, the chlorines go here, they're identical, but if we go back to hydronium, it also would not have mattered where we put the lone pair. They're all identical, does not matter where the lone pair goes. Uh, for NO2 minus, this is AX2E1, so it has three electron groups. It should be based on the trigonal planar electron group geometry, but remember we name it as if the lone pair wasn't exist. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't exist. Uh, so this would be uh, a bent structure, which actually also shares the same structure as the amid anion, NH2 minus, except different bond angle. Here, the uh, lone pair is going to take up more space than the atom, so it's going to compress this angle. Again, we do not want to provide this angle or this angle because we don't know where the lone pair is. So this would be bent. Um, NO2 uh, plus is a good reminder that we don't draw lone, uh, excuse me, uh, double bonds in uh, 
the Vesper geometry or you don't need to. Um, we haven't done so in the book. Uh, so this would be linear with a bond angle of 180. That's rather straightforward. Uh, but you can also see the same thing here uh, with AX3 uh, in the case of NO3 minus. This is trigonal planar. We ignored uh, the double bond. It also does not matter which resonance structure you pick. You're still going to get uh, the same structure here. You're still going to get a trigonal planar structure of 120 degrees. Again, in these examples here, the electron group geometry is the same as the shape because there are no lone pairs on the center atom. Here for NH2 uh, minus AX2 E2, four electron groups based on a tetrahedron uh, or tetrahedral structure. However, we name the molecule as if the lone pair doesn't exist. So this would be bent with an angle that's less than 109.5 degrees. Uh, it doesn't um, take uh, a lot of thought to argue that um, if you have one pair, that's going to result in less repulsion or less compression of this angle than if you had two lone pairs. So um, although uh, we don't ask you to be able to tell us how much less than 109.5 degrees this is, you should be able to argue that this bond angle should be greater than in NH2 minus because there's more compression, more repulsion here between the lone pairs and the atoms, so this bond angle is going to be uh, compressed. Um, so to summarize our results, um, we uh, acknowledge we always name the shape as if the lone pair did not exist. So this would be a trigonal pyramidal, tetrahedral, bent, linear, trigonal planar, and bent. So the only uh, times that this comes into play is when we have a lone pair in the center atom. And you can see that reflected here, here, and down here. Uh, good luck.